zeolite and petroleum industry is of great importance for various refining processes, such as, for instance, catalytic cracking or hydro cracking. Why zeolite can be used, can't be used in, it, in its synthetic form? Because, first of all, it lacks stability. The crystallographic structure disappears at high temperature. Secondly, its acidity is unsuitable for the kind of chemical reaction involved during catalytic treatment. So the solid has to be treated under different conditions, such as, for instance, self steaming at different temperatures, and finally, more or less strong acid leaching. The well-known effect of self steaming or calcination is the increase of the silicon alumina ratio of the framework, which is 2.5 before the first treatment. The general explanation for zeolite stabilization is the migration of aluminum atom from the framework to form several kinds of aluminum species in the porosity. The role of acid leaching is to remove aluminum from extra framework. We have very little information about the evolution of zeolite structure during these different treatments. The use of Ritvelt refinement techniques of X-ray powder spectra gives data on these structu structural modifications. Textural changes may also be important. We used conventional transmission electron microscopy to describe the, the mesoporosity and its evolution with different treatments. These two powerful tools, X-ray diffraction and electron microscopy, were used to characterize a coherent, a coherent series of deilluminated y zeolite. These different samples were studied. You are here why they light. The first treatment is a self-steaming. Self-steaming at three different temperatures. And this solid is treated with acid leaching treatment with HL acid at different concentrations. One normal, 1.8 normal. <coughs> All this solid uh, were studied with different analytical techniques in order to measure the silicon to alumina ratio, the crystallinity, the unit cell parameter, and the power volume by nitrogen absorption. You can see on this slide the different samples with the acid treatment. The Silicon to aluminum ratio measured by X-ray fluorescent, infrared spectroscopy, NMR spectroscopy, silicon NMR spectroscopy, uh, X-ray diffraction using this formula with the determination of A, the unit cell parameter you have in this color, and the crystallinity given by X-ray diffraction. And the power volume by nitrogen absorption. You can see, of course, the evolution of the silicon to aluminum ratio, which is increasing with the temperature treatment. Some details on the techniques we used X ray diffraction and electron microscopy. On this slide, you can have some information on the X-ray diffraction and the Ritvelt technique for refining the X-ray patterns. The aim of the Ritvelt method is to minimize the radiability factor R, where W i are fixed weighting. Uh, y i zero and Y i c are respectively the calculated and the measured intensity. It's, as you can see, a least, <coughs> least squares method. Uh, the 
calculated intensity is expressed by all this formula, where S is a scale factor between experimental and calculated intensities. LK is the Lorentz polarization factor. PK is the multiplicity of the plane H, H, K, L. FK is a structure factor given, given by the following expression. Well, H, K, L as are the Miller indices. F, J is the atomic scattering factor of the J atom. M, J is the temperature factor is a temperature factor related to the mean square displacement of the atom from its average position. In the last expression, delta d j g d delta theta e k represents the big chain function. In the, in the x rays 82 program from Christian Berlocher and F, this function is a product of, the, of one symmetric and one asymmetric part. To observe the different zeoli by electron microscopy, we used a microscope GL 120CX. Ultra-thin sections of grains embedded in resins were used. As the electron beam may cause some damage, to zero light, the high resolution camera was used. I am now to describe the results we obtained by electron microscopy. We first consider the steamed zero light. This figure show, shows part of typical grains consisting of large regions like this or this grains due to the cutting process. The magnification is not very high, and we can note that each small grain doesn't appear to be homogeneous. Small, near circular nodules, like here in, the, in that part. With a darker than general aspect are seen in the zeolite structure. They correspond to the mesoporosity formed during the self-steaming treatment. They are, at this stage of the treatment, filled by amorphous material. We can also observe very disturbed regions in that part or here or so here. At the great boundaries, which correspond to amorphous regions. This picture shows the same sample self steamed at 1003 degrees Kelvin, but with greater magnification. We clearly see the nodules in the bulk and the amorphous part of the surface of the grain. You can see here the amorphous part, clearly seen on that part, and the nodules here, darker than the general aspect. It's, it's more or less possible to note the very extended reticular planes, I suppose it's difficult on that picture, over 100 and different orientation of these reticular planes can be observed in various regions, which in reality show several crystals with different orientations. The greater magnification allows us to observe amorphous layers at the surface of the crystals. These last details can also be seen with wider line treated at 1073 degrees Kelvin. You can see on that part here the amorphous layer at the surface of the grain, and you can see the very disturbed aspect of the grain in that part. What now the effect of the acid leaching? 
This picture concerns a self steaming at 1003 degrees Kelvin with one normal acid bleach. The main difference from pictures of self steaming zeolite is the metaporinity, which now appears to have a quite light shape. In that part of the photo, you can see clearly all these nodules we are now quite uh, white. Acid leaching removes the amorphous phase present inside the cavity, whose size is about 100 angstrom. Another observation is a passion dissolution uh, of the amorphous layer previously shown, shown after the steaming treatment. On this photo, you can see for uh, other uh, temperature, steamed temperature at 873 degrees C and after the 1.8 normal acid bleaching, a very extended mesoporosity. That part or here you can see the grain are very shape disturbed. We can also see the main effect of the acid treatment is to extract the amorphous material. Let me remark in that part here. Uh, the particular arrangement of this very large cavity in quite a straight line, showing the destruction of a very large volume of the initial solid. describing our results on the characterization of zeolite structure, and although you are probably very familiar to this structure, I would like to recall the main feature of the cubic Y zeolite. The framework is defined by five tetroidal atoms, one silicon here, and four, one, two, three, four oxygen atoms. All the structure we studied were refined in the FD3M and space group. In spite of the modification of the silicon to aluminium ratio, which implies a variation of the TO distances, of course, for all the observed zeolite, we found an unchanged structure of the framework. The main differences between the solids were the location of the extra framework species and the effect of the steaming treatment and the acid attack on the different framework species. We first consider the low temperature steaming zeolite at 873 degrees Kelvin. This table shows the zeolite steamed at 873 degrees uh, C at two different. If it's possible to look down. You are in this table, three, the three samples, one, uh, this one after uh, self steaming self this one after acid bleaching, one normal, and this one after 1.8 normal acid treatment. On this picture, you can find uh, the T atoms, silicon or aluminium, and their position. X, Y, Z as position, U is the temperature factor. You can see the, the four different oxygen atoms, O1, O2, O3, O4, with a weak position and the different position of this atom. This is the framework. In order to increase the reliability, the, the, the agreement with the experimental spectrum, it was necessary to introduce three kinds of extra framework atoms. 
extra framework one, two, and three. You can see the evolution of the uh, of the PP parameter, which is the population parameter, which is decreasing with the acid leaching. And you can note also the very good reliability factor, which is close to 10%, which is good for uh, X-ray uh, diffraction patterns, for polar diffraction. The three uh, extra framework atoms are located in the satellite cage. In the next slide, we are going to see a structural representation of these different positions in the solar cage. On this projection, for the self stimulated light, you can see the extra framework position in red. Blue atoms are silicon and oxygen atoms of the framework. One is at the center of the solar cage. Four other atoms from Titua Hydro with the previous atom situated at the center of the cage. The distance between these two atoms is 1.69 angstrom. And for the position, this one, and the last one, this one, of course, generated by symmetry operation, are located on the freefall axis and very close to the hexagonal prism. This slide shows the same parts of the structure, 873 degree car, but after the one normal acid leach. Species very similar to those shown previously are detected. One atom at the center of the satellite cage, three other atoms, this one. Uh, but yes, now they are not, as you can see, they are not perfectly situated on the freefold axis. Also, you have, this is the same atom, but you have a three representation with the symmetry axis. The last atom you saw previously, we saw previously, this one is now translated further in the hexagonal prism. Considering the population parameter, we can say that two suddenly cages are filled by extra framework species out of the eight cages present in the unit cell. This view is related to the 1.8 normal acid treatment. Once again, we found uh, the, the three atoms which are not perfectly situated on the threefold axis. This one, you have this one, no, sorry, this one there, this one there, and you can find over time the atoms which are situated near the hexagonal prism. Now describe our results for the self stimulated zeolite at 1,003 degree Kelvin. We find an extra framework position at the center of the solid cage. You have the T atoms, the, the four oxygen atoms, and the extra framework one, extra framework two. But you can see that the extra framework three, which was near the hexagonal prism, is not is now not present. We can see also that it's necessary to have, to have a higher acid attack in order to disappear the extra firm of species one and two. You can also notice for these different samples the quite good reliability factor. <laughs> For the sample, 
treated at 1073 degree car at higher temperature. No extra frameworks species were found after the steaming trip. In conclusion, all these results clearly show the importance of electron microscopy and reflectory finding techniques as powerful tools for following the evolution of the texture and structure of zeolite during stabilization treatments. We have seen how the mesoporosity formed during self-steaming evolves. At this stage of the treatment, the pores are nearly filled by amorphous material. The necessity of having silicon atoms, which reoccupy the aluminic vacancies, can be used to interpret the formation of secondary pore systems. The amorphous phase is probably rich in aluminium. It was also be possible to demonstrate the presence of amorphous material at the surface of the zeolite grains, which can be more or less removed by the adductive acid treatment. Aluminum species are located in the micropore inside the zeolite structure. With the refinement gave information about the zeolite frameworks and the atom extra frameworks, it has been confirmed that the cubic crystalline structure is preserved during the different treatments. Extra frameworks were found situated in the sodalite cage. <coughs> there are probably aluminum species in a tetraedral geometry. It was at the stage of this work very difficult to describe these extra framework atoms more preci precisely. Our results will be correlated with infrared or magic angle spin NMR data, which shows the existence of silicon or aluminium extra frameworks. May I point out that no extra framework species were detected in the super cage. This fact is very surprising because it's well known that these species are responsible for pore plugging before active leaching. It's perhaps one limitation of the ritual treatment of X-ray diffraction patterns where only a few species could be present but are very disordered and have a very small contribution to the bright bits of the crystalline part of the solid. I thank you for your attention. Papers now, questions? The way you were presenting this, it looked like you only had aluminum atoms inside the silver light cages. I was wondering what happened to the oxygen that uh, must have come out when you de-illuminated the framework. Could you repeat the question? The question was that the way the uh, paper was presented, only aluminum atoms were said to be inside the soda light cages. I was asking what happened to the oxygen that must have come out at the same time. Uh, the species we, we show the soda light cage probably at the center of the soda light cage you have aluminum. And we suppose we haven't very uh, certitude because it's difficult with X-ray diffraction, X-ray technique to uh, uh, distinguish aluminum and oxygen. It's quite, uh, it's not very far. And uh, probably we suppose that you have aluminum at the center of the cage and you have the free oxygen in tetraedral position. Okay. And the other atoms but we haven't very certitude. These are the results from Whitman to Feynman. I think now it's very important to make correlation with other techniques and we use the bibliography, which is very important on the subject, to, to give more details on the nature of each atom we have so on the stage. Uh, one of the
the aspect of the Barlow peripheral refinement is the assumption that the sum of radii are those that are well known in stable structures of the material. Now, we are now looking at the opportunities when one may have very unusual, uh, not well coordinated species. So I wonder when we apply these assumptions, whether or not we have a tendency to overlook unusual phenomena in structure. <coughs> I think uh, if, if you, with, with these results, if you have only the framework in order to simulate the X-ray patterns of the steamed or uh, of, the, of the steamed and uh, after the attack acid, it's very difficult to have a good reliability factor in order to fit the experimental and the calculated uh, spectrum. I very much welcome your comment that you are using additional experimentation, NMR and others, to confirm your results. Yeah. Uh, and you have shown that uh, some of the aluminum is located in the solar-like cages and the hexagonal prisms. But besides that, you mentioned that perhaps some aluminum is present in the super cages, but is disordered. Have you tried to quantify the ratio of aluminum in the large cages versus the aluminum in the solar-like and hexagonal prisms? I think it's very difficult. We are going to try, but I think it's very difficult uh, because uh, the only way to do that, I think, it is to have uh, uh, to, to make the, the, the ratio to, to have exactly the aluminium which is extracted from the framework, and this is very difficult. And you can make on the, you can make on the data. Uh, 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 you can make enormous error as the atom in extra framework. Uh, there, are not, there are not many atom extra framework. It's very difficult to have a little error and you can have very great divergences. Yeah. Thank you. One, one more question about the aluminum. Is it not true that the aluminum, the extra framework aluminum, is thought to be octahedral? And, and the drawing, the way you presented it, it seemed to me you have tetrahedral structures. How do you reconcile those? Uh, uh, I think that's uh, the problem because uh, with NMR, with NMR and infrared and X-ray diffraction, with sometimes the head of neutron diffraction, can give information. You can see a species, uh, and I think it's very good to. Uh, these results for interpreting the data of infrared and NMR when you have a lot of species which are moving and which are not very well indexed. Well, not, not very known. Not very well known. No, excuse me. I think... I, I take it that you believe there are tetrahedral aluminum species that are not our Yes. Yes. But in the, I think in the super cage, Probably you can have uh, uh, some in the satellite cage. The environment of the framework is very small. Also, if you have an atom on that position, probably it's more uh, it, it can move. In the super cage, you have more space, and the atom can move, and it's very difficult to to see them by X-ray diffraction because there is a lot of disorder. The influence of the structure is very weak. Thank you very much.